My name is Nancy Brasher, and I'm standing in one of my most favorite places in the universe, the sixth grade den that's a part of the middle school at Brentwood Academy. I was in the first graduating class in 1973, and I'm so excited to look back at our history and the faithfulness of God and the people He has brought to this community. Terry Bolden Ward from the class of 1993 recently sat down with Mr. Bill Brown, Brentwood Academy's founding headmaster, and asked him some very insightful questions. A little bit about Terry. She graduated in 1993 and her son Jack graduated 30 years later. At Brentwood Academy, Terry was involved in the student leadership team and played four sports. She went on to Georgia Tech where she played softball and got a BS degree in finance and management. Terry has been a certified financial planner in Brentwood for many years and goes back often to her Brentwood Academy roots that she would say were really grounded in the Christ-like environment. Mr. Brown, what led you and Beth to want to start Brentwood Academy? When I was at BGA, I wanted to be a football coach, and uh, we were expecting our fourth child, and so I felt like I, I had to go to take care of my family. I, I couldn't stay there and on that salary, so we went into administration, and I, I, that was not a gift of mine, in my opinion. I, uh, struggle because I'd been working with football players in high school and then now I'm working with kindergarten babies. I had a chance to get my master's at that point and uh, build towards administration and uh, thinking about the dream of, of starting a school started back when I was at BGA. A, a, a man by the name of Jimmy French and I would talk after coaching. Uh, he was the basketball coach, I was the football coach, so we'd get together and talk. And uh, we need to get a school, another school out here somewhere. And my whole feeling about uh, education was not so much merit scholars. I was one of just kids, mainly, that were willing to take steps of risk, being in risk-taking situations. I felt like that's the best place they can grow. And so we, we started even at Oak Hill, or putting kids in risk-taking situations uh, as they were growing. And when they come back as alums and talk to me, that's the things they remember. I wasn't thinking so much that it would be a Christian school so much, but more that through relationships, um, they would see the Lord. And so I, my goal was trying to get as many people as I could that knew the Lord uh, in front of young, uh, children. We were the first place out here. We came even before Brentwood I did. And um, so we were in the community of Brentwood. It was a small community back then. I mean, Granny White was just a bumpy road with cow pastures on each side and barbed wire fences. No trees. Now you look out there, it's totally different. So it was just natural to say Brentwood Academy we were going to be the school in Brentwood, we thought, but it's kind of changed now. We wanted to leave it open-ended and make sure that we're in ministry, not just teaching Christians only. We wanted that open-door policy, and that's really the only reason we didn't change it to a Christian school. Did the mission statement. There were many major events at the beginning of Brentwood Academy in those early years, one of which was so significant to the history and to the future of our school. Mr. Brown was fired. Ultimately, he continued as head of school and so many good things came out of that situation, such as the mission of Brentwood Academy, many policies and procedures for students and the Board of Trustees. It was amazing how God took something really hard and turned it into something really good. One of the board members said that we need to do a study because the parents, a lot of the parents are upset that, that Mr. Brown is leaving. So they did a study. Uh, a guy came in and said, you've got too many board members. You've got 17 guys on the board. And they're really not together on what they want in a school. And there's no mission statement. 
and uh, you're really running by your student handbook and and whatever you tell the faculty to do. We didn't even have a faculty manual at that time. And so uh, they said, cut your board down to nine people who are really committed to this, going in the same direction and and develop a mission. This is where the, uh, what I call the rebirth of, of BA. Uh, it was born again because we established that the Lord's the one that's the founder of the school, and I'm just there. And he made that really clear to me. You've got to remember who's who's running the school. And don't ever forget that I, I, it is I, I am. And then the other thing is you've got to forgive if there's any bitterness or anything towards those who uh, fired you. You need to give that away. Give give it up. And that wasn't really very hard for me to do because it was easy to see uh, two sides to everything. But that was the birth of the school when the mission statement was set, that we would give everything to the Lord, he would run it. We wanted to be sure that we covered the areas of the triangle, the spiritual life and the academics and the athletics were put in. And then after that came um, to who? To the glory of God. And, and then we talked a lot about what, well, where's, what about Jesus and the Trinity? And we decided to leave it open to the glory of God and then trust the people who were there at the school to tell the story of Jesus. Mr. Brown reflects on why Christian is not in the name of the school. How did you choose the name Brentwood Academy? It's not a Christian school. It doesn't have the name Christian. I went on to explain that schools are not Christian. Only the people who have broken hearts for the Lord day by day make it Christian. And it's really important to me that uh, that our brokenness comes in each day. And a lot of times it doesn't. I mean, because we're sinners. I mean, we, we forget who we are. And... Uh, as true believers, but the heart's got to be broken. There's got to be a humility in there somewhere where we're not in charge and of, of anything. I can remember using that and talking about Brentwood Academy 20 and 30 years ago. Um, tell us how the open door policy not only applies to attracting students that may or may not know Jesus, but also, what about the people who work here and the teachers and the staff and everyone who pours into the kids? When I did my interviews with teachers, I tell them we're not a Christian school, but you're going to hear a lot of the gospel here. And they'll, not everybody's a believer on the faculty, but this is where we're going to be. And uh, if you want to come work for here and you're not a believer, the door's open because God can do anything. And... Uh, he might be changing you as a faculty member. And that's the way it happened. And, and so uh, it was really interesting to me. The one teacher that we had that was really strong academically and good uh, in our field. And it was so interesting that so many of our good students gravitated to her. And they were the students may have been believers, but she wasn't. That was kind of the way the school was set up. So you could have those options, and then, um, but it it did create tension within the faculty. And when I retired, Kurt came in, and that was one of the biggest and greatest things that we did, because I actually did believe what he was doing. I wanted role models in, in relationship that were believers. The way he works, it's not, it's not our time. It's his time that we are on. And so uh, he knew what he was doing when he brought Kurt to continue on with the way he was doing it. And so he was waiting until Kurt came to make the change. <laughs> and so it was such a healthy thing. The faithfulness of the Lord continues through all generations, and we have certainly seen that at Brentwood Academy. It seems like to me, the, uh, I hear that the chapel may be the first thing that's going. I mean, that's the Lord, for sure. And it looks like it's going to be more of a permanent fixture than it was originally planned. 
and which is good. And so again, it's his time and his time going on. Over the years, Brentwood Academy has grown. We have built excellent facilities to serve the growing needs of our community. That's why it's imperative that we continue to build in order to offer excellent opportunities for our students. Can you speak to a little bit of why the facilities matter in the delivery of our mission to educate the whole person? The building of the middle school is designed really for relationships. I mean, there's little pods of you got the sixth graders together, and they're all in their little cubbies, and I mean, and they have their books right there. They all their uh, disciplines are taught right there in in this pod. And if there's any trouble, it goes back to the history of the school. I, I can remember when we were starting the school, the round room would have been what the library was back then, and it was just a big open area, and we had our assemblies in there and everything, and. If we had any trouble, I just rang. I had a bell that I'd go go out and ring, and everybody in the school would hear it right there. I think it's beautiful how you interwove that type of experience, so kids would have that on a daily basis, right? Or or at least have that foundation of that intimacy yeah. with the dens, that feeling of love and support, and you yeah. know, God in the room. I think uh, just the idea of eye contact that the person that's speaking is not up high looking down on people, but boys here, it's a good feeling. I loved it. When we had our first round room was in the library. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how we, I forget how we came about putting that thing in there, but we, and Kurt still does it, I think. The whole faculty is in there and everybody's eye to eye. And, and I, uh, I was just, sitting in the front, but I was on the same level. Brimwood Academy's message to alumni is one of thanksgiving, and he hopes they will take with them and remember the ways people have poured into them. Well, first, I, I would say uh, thanksgiving to the Lord for the stories that we get to hear. They're not all perfect stories. I mean, they're, they're people in struggles right now, and God is doing work. It's a thankful heart that I got to see it, see it. That's about all I can say that it's important to, uh, that I get to continue as long as I'm here to watch what's happening. Mr. Brown has never wavered that Brentwood Academy belongs to God. Listen to his heart. Remember who it is that's the head of the school and who, who it's about. And, and then the other thing is the broken heart and is more about forgiveness and and things like that. The main thing is who's in, who, who's in charge of the school, whose school is it? You know, we have our mission statement, the each whole person, yeah. you know, body, mind, and spirit to the glory of God. Yeah. That's right. Um, we also have a motto, which is Vivat Veritas. Right. Could you tell us, you know, yeah. Why, why did, is that chosen, and then how does that play out in the daily lives of the students and faculty? Well, that, that came about when we were starting the school. Yeah. Truth prevail. I mean, and I think I had a sign over my office somewhere that said, it's, it's God's truth, and it's also telling the truth. Let the truth of the word prevail. When I was here, we focused a lot on what we called the triangle philosophy. And so, you know, you created the mission statement, which still endures very well today. And the tenets of that being academic, spiritual, and athletic physical growth. Mm -hmm. Tell me what the triangle meant and why that was chosen. The base of the triangle, which is the key, is the spiritual side. And then the arms go reaching up towards the Lord. You grow close to God as you use these two arms uh, through risk-taking experiences. I mean, that you're taking ac academics is definitely risk-taking. Uh, we think it's important that the base of the triangle was spiritual and that the athletic and uh, academic sides just serve the purpose of, of growth towards the Lord. This is just a way you can 
put yourself in risk-taking situations. Mm -hmm. Transforming hearts. God does it best. And it's been a huge part of our history, and it will be of our future. Lives have been changed, not only uh, in, in, by students, but uh, there have been parents. I can remember uh, the retreats that we had back in the early days. Where the parents would come and be cooks and, and do the food for the children, and, the, and then Melissa would have uh, uh, group leaders who were on the going to Vanderbilt or Belmont or Lipscomb or someplace like that that had gone to BA to lead the small groups. And we'd usually have one speaker, and he'd speak probably four times you know, from Friday night through Sunday morning. There'd be sessions, and then they'd break up in small groups. But I remember the parents, they would be cleaning up the kitchen, and then they would kind of slip in in the back. And I've had uh, parents come to the Lord. There were a lot of lives changed. And now, I mean, you can, it still happens. It's not any different. That's just my part. What I remember, we had more time to do deep retreats and, and stuff, which is hard to find now in this busy world. I mean, it's just, I don't know how you do it. But it, it happens here because I hear about it. Wow, what a great recollection of our history from Mr. Brown. Brentwood Academy is unique. It's not like any other school. It's so important that we keep going and hold our ministry and the mission of what we do every day close to our hearts and move forward.